The Chicago Blackhawks have a major opportunity with the change they recently made to Connor Bedard. We also have a lot of Blackhawks featured in this year's Final Four of the NCAA Tournament, as well as a comparison from Ivan Demidov with Connor Bedard is going to be incredible. So we're going to be talking about all of that here in this video. Very quickly before we do, though, we noticed that 78% of you guys watching right now are not subscribed to the channel. If you're looking for a spot to get all your Chicago Blackhawks news as it happens, you're in the right spot. Make sure to hit the sub button, join us along here as we cover everything Chicago Blackhawks related and keep you up to date with the latest news. But like I said, we need to start this one off here with a possible change that could be perfect for the Chicago Blackhawks. This involves Connor Bedard, like I said in the intro. You know what they say, special teams, special plays, special players. And that is Connor Bedard here. You see from Ben Pope this tweet, Connor Bedard is currently slotted on Jason, Dickens, J Jason Dickinson's wing. A new look for the Blackhawks that should help Bedard on the face-offs and in defensive coverage. And I have to say, I love this move. I really like the thought of Bedard playing on the wing for the time being. Maybe not a permanent thing. We know that Bedard definitely has that possibility on the face-offs. We seen that in junior we've seen that in the world juniors and he's worked out very well but let's not let's not look at this uh in the in a you know Blackhawks fan way. He has struggled on the faceoffs this season. That is one thing that really has been an issue with him, as well as the defensive coverage. And having him, you know, focus on an up and down game, scoring and the defense while not playing center, I think is the perfect idea right now. So Noah, what do you think yeah. about this change of Connor Bernard's game here? Yeah, I think, you know, you said where you said it's not permanent. I obviously, I envision Bedard as, as a centerman in the NHL, but obviously who better to put him on a line with than Jason Dickinson, who's been, you know, pretty consistent right now between the, you know, on the faceoff dot, you know, I, I'm not sure what his stats are exactly, but I know he's been, he's been pretty solid, but it, it's also, it allows Bedard, you know, to be in every sort of situation, like, like uh, Ben Pope, I think it was said in that article. So I'm a big fan of it, you know, obviously, as you as you get older in the NHL and as you become more experienced, like get more experienced, you're going to be playing different situations. I think Bedard will end up being a centerman, and I think he'll he'll turn out just fine. But for the time being, yeah, sure, I'm I'm a fan of it as well. Yeah, I think this is really just to smooth out some wrinkles. You know, we've seen mm -hmm. uh, Bedard still shine in this league, still shine in this game, and we know that he is the future of this team. No doubt, there's no questions about that. But you don't want to rush him into any scenario. If he's not playing well, you got to change something up. That's a part of the game. That's a part of everything that. Uh, of life, I guess you could say, you know, to keep it simple, this is a change of something has to happen. But uh, as you can see here, the first game that they did this, Connor Bedard, uh, one assist, six shots, uh, 20 minutes time on ice. You know, some pretty average stuff, but I've seen a lot of people say that he wasn't as noticeable in this game. Now, yeah. I don't think that's a bad thing. You know, there's a lot of times that Connor Bedard is a bit noticeable. Very, uh, very few times being, you know, making mistakes, I guess you could say. A lot of times being that superstar he is, the shots, the the breakaways, whatnot. But I don't think it's a bad thing that he wasn't as noticeable as he is before. Uh, you know, also, he's taking a face-off. So he's going to be on camera a lot in that case. But, you know, yeah. we're not, we're yeah. not going to take a look at the, uh, the obvious, you know. Uh, I, I do think that, once again, it's a very good idea. Just to move him there for now, see how it works out. And if it works better than being a centerman, Maybe they could go and that. try this even more and more in the next season and throughout the summer just to see what it looks like, um, you know, I guess in the advanced analytics department. But as of right now, I do like the move. So something that can, also, oh, something I have to keep an eye on there, though, too. The fact that they could go after a sentiment in the draft as well. You know, obviously, it brings brings a lot of sort of different perspe perspectives. So, I mean, it's a good move, I think. Well, anyway, I'll let you finish. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm, I was just saying, it's something they're going to have to keep an eye on. If this works out better than being a sentiment, I think that this is something that uh, the Blackhawks are going to have to ponder, you know, uh, especially in those uh, advanced analytics departments, like I said. But we have another very big thing here. The Blackhawks are featured very well in this year's Frozen Four. So I want to talk about this a bit because this is also going to have a uh, an impact on whether Bedard plays as a winger, a centerman. Uh, not, you know, right now. Obviously not right now because these players are still playing in the college tournament. But uh, when some of these players start to make their way to the NHL, it's going to be something to think about here. It's going to be from Scott Powers. The Blackhawks will have three prospects in the Frozen Four with Frank Nazar from Michigan, Ryan Green with Boston, and Aiden Thompson with Denver. So if I'll pull up this bracket here from this one, you can see Boston College, University of Michigan playing against each other, Boston University and Denver also playing against each other. So it's going to be some very, very good 
high level matchups to actually see what these guys these uh, Blackhawks prospects um will show against some high level competition you know these are some of the best college teams out there as you can see Boston right. College Boston University and Denver are all uh the first seed in their own uh, respective division and University of Michigan is nothing to scoff at either nothing to look over um even yeah. though they are the third seed they are still one of the best college teams in the world for hockey so this is going to be something to keep an eye on all of these Blackhawks guys like I said uh Thompson and Nazar and Green, these are going to be, uh, you know, especially some of the highly touted prospects for the, uh, the Blackhawks, yeah, yeah. they're going to be ones to watch. So, Noah, what do you think about these players here in this tournament? And, you know, let's just throw a hot one out there. Who do you think is going to win this tournament? Oh, I'm going to go with Boston University, to be completely honest with you. Matthew Celebrini, Lane Hudson, they're they're just insane. But going back to the Blackhawks, I think it just goes to show, I mean, the depth that they have in their in their prospect pool. Obviously, they're represented three out of the four teams. And, you know, a lot of those guys, I think, are going to be, you know, decent NHL players. Obviously, Frank Nazar, that pass that he had the other night, I mean, that was just pure oh, filth. Gross, uh, gross. Ryan Green, too, as well. I mean, you know, a local guy, obviously, I'm going to pump his tires a little bit. We're uh, we're Newfoundlanders, and so is Ryan Green. So we're uh, I'm going to pump him a little bit, and uh, Eden Thompson as well. You know, obviously it it's, it shows goes to show that they're they got a good prospect pool for sure. Yeah, one thing to notice as well is in this Frozen Four that we've seen a lot of undrafted NCAA free agents being. Uh, <laughs> In the market lately, swirling around many teams, we've already seen a few sign, and I think there's another spot the Blackhawks could look. You know, there's lots of undrafted talent out there. Maybe someone missed a year due to an injury. Maybe someone missed a year, you know, due to not being on the team or whatnot, and really not having an opportunity to be scouted by an NHL team. So there's some incredible talent there that I think the Blackhawks could... Uh, take a look at, you know, maybe even sign on an amateur tryout this year and have an entry-level deal next year. Uh, and I, I'm a very, very heavy favorite on that style of player. Someone who has to grind through uh, the dirt and not have that easy road to an NHL draft pick that it just shows that how much they want it compared to some other people. So I'm a huge fan. There's a lot of things the Blackhawks should look at here in this tournament, especially with these four teams here uh, that aren't drafted from, you know, an NHL team. But one more topic on a prospect. Some guy we've talked about a lot here, Ivan Demidov. This is an insane stat that I'm going to pull up here right now, courtesy of Noah. And Noah said this to me earlier, and I just, I couldn't believe it when I seen it, to be honest with you. This here, Ivan Demidov and a Connor Bedard comparison. You can see the comps on the bottom and then the full comp for Connor Bedard on the uh, the bottom right there. Some hefty names there. One of Demidov being, yeah. not one actually, I should say all of them. John Tavares, Paul Correa, Patrick Kane, Robert Reichel, and Sidney Crosby. You know, those are some very, very high level names along with Connor Bedard, UC, Jack Eichel, Connor McDavid, Phil Kessel, Robert Reichel once again, and Wayne Gretzky. Jack Hughes, Ivan Demidov, Jack Eichel, Robert Reichel again, and Patrick Kane on the full comps. Ivan Demidov's already being compared to Connor Bedard. So if they do end up getting Ivan Demidov, like we've said in a lot of these recent videos here, we have something on our hands, folks. This is going to be incredible. If the, if something like this occurs, you know, I, I don't know what I'll do. I really don't yeah. know. I'll have to go watch a game next season or, or 8 or 10. You know, not easy to get down to Chicago here, but, you know... It's something to, to something to really ponder and think about heading towards the draft. So, no, I know yeah. you were the one that sent this to me, but let the viewers yeah. know what do you think about Ivan Demidov in a situation like this. We've spoken about him before, so check out those previous videos if you do want to see that style of comparison and uh, thought on him. But what do you think about this fit he would have with Connor Bedard in this lineup? Yeah. Well, I mean, I've done a little bit of research. Obviously, Kirk said I, I sent him the video. I was the source for this, I guess. But I've kind of compared him to almost like a Nikita Kucherov, I guess, if if that sort of makes sense. Obviously, not going to blow you away with a with a skating ability. Like, I mean, like compared to a Conor Bedard, which he was compared to. But, I mean, this kid is just absolutely insane. You know, he's putting up electric numbers there in, in the MHL, I think, which is like the, the equivalent to like the AHL for the NHL. Yeah. But insane numbers. And I think if you compare Conor Bedard with, with Ivan Demidov, I mean, that that's... That's just insane. Essentially, Nikita Kucherov with with Connor McDavid, which I mean, we all know they're both having. I think they're one and two in the scoring race right now in the NHL, which is insane. So I'm I'm with you. I mean, we'd have to go together. I think we'd we'd have to film something for the channel if we do end up going down to see a game. <laughs> yeah, that would just be insane. Whether no matter if it's in Chicago, where else is? I'd have to see it live. I'd have to see it in person to actually believe what I'm seeing. If this is uh, if this is the case, but 
you know, there's going to be a lot of stuff that we're going to have to take a look at in the coming weeks uh, and months heading towards the draft. A lot of stuff regarding this NCAA free agents. We have a lot of news that is going to be coming down our way for the Chicago Blackhawks. So you're going to want to make sure you hit the sub button so you don't miss out on any of it. We're going to be talking about it all here in live streams, videos, and whatnot. So stay tuned. You're going to want to hit the sub button so you stay up to date with all this team has to offer. But that's all I got for this video. If you did enjoy, make sure to give the video a like. Uh, let us know you enjoy the content. You know, we have a lot of stuff, like I said, coming, especially uh, these very busy few months for, uh, for the Blackhawks mainly. You know, it's going to be uh, an insane hype train towards the draft. So you're gonna, you're not going to want to miss it, but that's all we got. Thank you for watching. Hope you have a great day. See you later.